Hi, I'm Michelle Sterling for Friends of Science Society. CBC did another softball report with the Honourable Catherine McKenna, Canada's Minister of Climate Change and Environment, like they did in 2015. That a lot of developing countries, like the Marshall Islands, I'm wearing the coconut fronds from the Marshall, Marshall Islands, I mean, they're actually sinking. As the waters rise, they're sinking. And so 1.5 degrees is something that they need to see. Wherein no one challenged the minister on the claim that small islands are drowning due to human-induced climate change. They may be eroding, but sea level rise is not the issue. When you get islands to be that small, uh, Erosion by the sea, regardless of what is happening, uh, can be significant. This time, Minister McKenna was reporting from COP23 in Bonn, Germany, in the heart of industrialized, coal-powered Germany. McKenna recently announced that Canada will team with the UK to phase out coal worldwide, as if it's any of her business to interfere in the energy policies of sovereign nations, most of which rely on coal for their industry and national electrical power needs. In fact, coal is very popular worldwide and very powerful. It's what's driving development in the nascent Asian tiger countries, from which the West now gets many of its manufactured goods. Is the minister proposing to put all those people out of work? and deny you an affordable flat screen TV or cell phone? Well, no, wait. According to news reports, the minister claims that all these countries would love to have renewable energy instead. Just a matter of finance. Well, first of all, it's clear from that statement that the minister has no idea of the difference between a coal-fired power plant or a wind farm or solar panels in terms of energy. As noted by Professor Michael J. Kelly of Cambridge, continuing to build out and subsidize wind and solar is total madness. They cannot support even basic society in terms of the energy they deliver, let alone a society with high culture and complex technology like aviation. So giving wind and solar to developing nations as a replacement for coal is condemning them to non-development. And we'll be indebting them forever, as we see what has happened in Ontario, the UK, and Europe. By contrast, coal is abundant, energy-dense, and provides reliable, very affordable power. In Alberta, coal power is just two cents a kilowatt hour at the gate, before transmission, admin, and distribution costs. You can't get cheaper than that. Coal-fired power plants can operate for 60 years. Wind and solar devices need replacing about every 20. There is no comparison. That's why promoters of renewables are constantly demonizing coal, because they just cannot compete. Not on price, not on reliability, and not on the fact that coal is on demand. It's dispatchable power that's available 24-7. The only way that wind and solar promoters can compete is by claiming that coal will kill you and the planet. Now, it's true that there are many noxious emissions from coal, especially if burned on an open grate. But we're talking national power grids, where the coal is typically pulverized for a complete burn and burned in the superheated environment where the exhaust is filtered from soot or PM2.5 emissions, and also scrubbed of sulfur. So we have the technology to mitigate these emissions. And that's what we should do for developing nations, offer them technology and aid to reduce pollution from coal, not to phase out the most affordable source of power. That's, that's eco-colonialism. McKenna also incorrectly claimed that India's air pollution problem right now is due to coal. But NASA reports it's due to a combination of farmers burning off crops and a stagnant weather pattern. In fact, worldwide, biofuels like wood and dung burnt on open flame is what's killing millions of people, not coal. That is often the case across Asia, thick smoke from people burning off forests to clear land for biofuel plantations to save the planet. That's what happens there. But back to coal. And of course, the big hammer in the coal conversation is 
carbon dioxide emissions. People like the minister believe this is what causes global warming. Well, since 2005, scientists have rejected the so-called radiated forcing theory of human influence on climate. And why? Because the projections of climate computer simulations, called models, did not correspond with observations, meaning the actual temperatures were not rising catastrophically at all, even though carbon dioxide continued to rise. So since 2005, scientists knew there was something terribly wrong with the theory of human-caused global warming or climate change. But the investment community, which was fully committed to financing wind and solar farms, expecting decades of rich and stable subsidies, they ignored this new science. In investment circles, there's a thing required by securities commissions. It's called continuous disclosure. That means if you have a gold mine and you initially tell your investors your find is worth X millions of dollars, but along the way you find out the vein of gold peters out, then you have to disclose to your investors that the material facts have changed. There's not as much gold as there was. The investment is worth less money. But in the climate investment world, it seems like continuous disclosure is blithely ignored in, in favor of continuous hysteria. And that's another mark against any firm selling securities. Claims of urgency, last chance, or fantastic rewards are all rejected by securities commissions as very suspicious hard sells, not backed up by evidence. And that's what I see in this frantic demand to phase out coal or we'll all die. Just buy these renewables and we'll save the planet. Especially curious because all wind and solar devices are made from vast amounts of oil natural gas, and lots of coal. Germany, host of the COP23 conference, added 90 gigawatts of wind and solar. This barely benefits them in terms of power and has caused power prices to triple over that of the US, four times that of Canada. Some 800,000 people have been cut off from their power in Germany for non-payment. Electricity is now a luxury good. We are wondering when the national broadcaster, the CBC National, will start asking hard questions of Minister Catherine McKenna on her global coal phase-out campaign. When will the CBC National inform the taxpaying public of these facts about coal, coal use worldwide, the shift in scientific review of the greenhouse gas theory of global warming, and the ridiculous costs and inefficiencies of wind and solar versus the huge sums of money paid to green, crony capitalists. Unlike the CBC, we at Friends of Science don't get $1.4 billion a year from taxpayers. We rely on memberships and donations to inform you of these climate and energy policy insights and to challenge the alleged consensus. So, if you can, please help us continue to have an informed conversation on critical energy policies. Become a member of Friends of Science and donate. For Friends of Science Society, I'm Michelle Sterling.